and welcome to my studio. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you are. Today I'm going to be working on a watercolor study. Uh, I've already done color studies. I don't know if you can see them over my shoulder. Uh, they're just splotches of color where I mixed the different combinations I want to do on paper. I've got my black and white sketches, my line drawing with my values uh, drawn out. I also have my photograph and a piece of relatively small 9 by 12 watercolor paper and I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, painting a small color study so thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy this demo here's my uh, study that I'm working on it's a 9 by 12 and it's a watercolor and I'm halfway done with applying the washes to the study my reference photo as you might be able to see is not very good. Probably the wisest thing I could have done was to shoot this and put it on the iPad and work with it there and enlarge it and uh, change the values, make them lighter and darker. But I decided to visually just work from a very small photograph. And I am following these lines that I did a line drawing with the values marked there one two and three one being the lightest and three being the darkest and then I did another line drawing and I fleshed out those values uh, it's just uh, shading keeping light medium and dark values and I'm doing my best to follow it here on the watercolor and again it's a study and I may go uh, a little more uh, deep into it as I continue it the colors that I'm using are, um, let's see, sap green and yellow ochre, sap green and ultramarine, sap green and aurelian, aurelian. <laughs> I have a hard time pronouncing that, a lot of uh, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna for a dark brown and a, a kind of a light blue-gray. And I may also throw in some, and I have already actually, throw in some Red. So I'm using on the alizarin crimson to get some purple in the dark shadows. And this is a, a shot of what my palette looks like. And I'm using, I think, a half inch flat, a small one, and probably going to be using a number four round. So this is the stage that we're at with this. It's a slow go. Everything is not quick, despite my impatience. So the next step will be to finish this blank area. And if you look carefully, you may see some small markings of one, two, and three. As I work on this, I erase these numbers as I get to that section, but they are a reminder for me as to what value I need to look at when I'm painting this. Thanks for watching, and we'll continue with this demo as I continue finishing this study. So this is the completed watercolor study, and right now you're looking at a pretty tight close-up of it. And I'm going to pull out and also pan up and down and show you how this turned out. I used some basic colors uh, that I had talked about uh, early on. And let me pan over here to show you the colors that I used. Uh, sap green and yellow ochre, sap green and ultramarine blue, sap green and aureolin, which is um, a warm yellow, but not as intense as a cadmium yellow. Then I used some mixtures of ultramarine blue and alizarin. Alizarin, I'm sorry, alizarin crimson to get some purple in there. I also used a lot of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to make a diffused bluish gray and also a gray and ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to make a brown and then I did some washes over the greens to knock them back to take some of that intensity of the color off and I used a combination of alizarin crimson and uh, ultramarine blue and I also did washes on the yellow to knock back some of that color. So you can do a lot with just basic colors that are on your palette. I don't recommend doing a lot of colors on your palette. You get too confused. Keep them basic and do mixtures of your colors. And one important exercise with this were, was the line drawing that I did with these numbers on it. 
marking the dark and lightest spots, the values. Number one being the lightest, two being a medium value, three being the darkest. And then I flesh this out a bit more with a pencil sketch, getting close to matching what I had with dark values, light values, and medium values. Now, as I started working on this, I of course did not always look, we're not always perfect, did not always look at my value sketches that I did. I started looking more at this photograph that was my original source material, which is not a great photograph, but it gave me an idea of what I wanted to do. So I found myself going back and forth primarily between this fleshed out sketch and then this not so great photograph. It is a small piece of watercolor paper. It's 140 pound cold press. And uh, I don't have a lot of room to work with, but this is a study. This is just the beginning. By trying to get down the colors that I chose to use with this, the darkest, lightest, and medium values, and trying to get an idea. This is the getting to know you stage when you're painting. It's like when you first start dating. So from this, I will probably do a larger study and we'll go from there. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this helped you a little bit with your watercolor work. And remember above all, keep practicing.